everyone, it's Dr. Carmen Corder here with Health Ed Solutions, and today's lesson is on insulin. Don't forget to visit us online at healthedsolutions.com for more free content. Now let's get started. We're going to talk about several different types of insulin, the most common types of insulin that you're going to see in practice in the hospital setting and be tested over in this video. So let's just talk about these three terms up here at the top. So we've got the onset, which that is when the insulin kicks in. Okay, that's when it starts working. The peak is when the insulin is working the hardest. It's kicking in and fighting hyperglycemia at its peak level with the strongest punch. And the duration is basically another word for when the insulin is out of the patient's system. So we're gonna start with the rapid acting insulin. And I've got listed under rapid acting. The most common ones that you'll see are the Lispro and the Aspart. Now, you'll see the Aspart. This is the Nova Log. It ends in L-O-G that we give most commonly for sliding scale insulin. So when you're checking your patient's blood sugar, usually it's ordered AC and HS or every six hours. And when you're in clinical, you're gonna check your patient's blood sugar before lunch, right? For that every six hours or AC HS schedule. And if their sugar is high, they're going to require sliding scale insulin. Well, most of the hospitals now have moved to using one of the rapid acting types of insulin to cover sliding scale needs. So most of the time you'll be giving Novolog. And that is one of the reasons you'll see that the onset here is within 30 minutes for all of the rapid acting. So no later than 30 minutes, these insulin start working and kicking in. So that is why we can't go in and say, check our patient's blood sugar at 1030 and give them their insulin when their lunch trays are not gonna be around until say 1230, okay? Because the insulin by then, it's going to be peaking out. So it's going to be working at its most powerful rate within two hours. So the onset of your rapid acting, your list pro, Nova log, the onset is within 30 minutes. So within 30 minutes, that insulin is working. It is peaking within about two hours. So if you give this rapid acting insulin, that's why it's called rapid acting, it is peaking out within two hours. So it's packing its full punch in two hours. And then within about four hours, it's out of the patient's system. So the rapid acting is in and out within four to five hours. And these are kind of generalizations because when you start trying to remember, you know, 15 to 30 minutes, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, it gets a little hard to remember. But just remember that your rapid acting are your list pro, your Novolog, as part. And the peak really is the most probably important factor that you need to remember that's what you're gonna be tested over. They're gonna ask you things like, when would you want to you know, make sure that the patient has their food after administering this type of insulin? And you obviously want to make sure that they have their food before the insulin is at its peak. Next, we have the short acting. And we used to use the short acting or the regular most often, but it seems like most of the hospitals that I'm working in now have switched over to the rapid acting. Now the onset for the short acting is within an hour. Some of them are gonna start working within 30 minutes, but all of them will be working within one hour of giving that insulin injection. It takes a little bit longer for the short acting to peak. So within three hours, these insulins peak out. And then within about eight hours, these insulins are out of the patient's system. So your rapid and your short acting, they do their job and they're out of the system within eight hours, all right? And that is your novel in R or your regular insulin. Moving on down to your intermediate acting, you can see with the duration between the short acting versus the intermediate, there is a huge difference. 
So when you go from short acting to intermediate acting, there's a huge difference in the duration of these insulins. So NPH is your intermediate acting insulin. So I think of intermediate NPH and it has an onset between one to two hours. So it's definitely going to be in the system and working within two hours at the most. It peaks out in 10 hours. You'll see different ranges. Some will say eight to 14 hours, but I'm giving you an approximation. So within about 10 hours of receiving that insulin at NPH, it is peaking out at its peak working power, if you will. And then the duration within about 18 hours, it's out of the system. So this insulin hangs around for quite some time, 18 hours. Then finally, our long-acting Levomir. I remember long-acting Levomir, but anytime you see an insulin that ends in IR or ear, mirror, it is a long-acting insulin. And this is the type of insulin that you night shift nurses will give at night to protect the patient overnight from hyperglycemia. And it, again, has an onset. See, all your onsets of your insulins are pretty close. They all start working within about the same amount of time. The big differences are the peak and duration. So within one to two hours, the Levomir or the Detamir is working. It doesn't peak for 18 hours. And then within about 24 hours, it is out of the patient's system. So long acting is your Levomir. It's onset, you know, again, it's not too different than the rest of your insulins. The peak is in 18 hours and within 24, it is out of the patient's system. That's it for our lesson today. Thanks for watching and remember to check out our website at healthedsolutions.com for more free content or to get certified or recertified online.